Hello, Chuck Disha here again. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about something which I think is kind of worth discussing because it comes up a lot, but often the details of what's actually going on behind the scenes aren't really discussed. And I think it's something which a lot of people benefit from actually getting more of a, a deep understanding of. So today is going to be all about uh, the difference between analog and digital. So first of all, well, what are these? What are some basic examples of these ideas? Well, to put it in a very simple way, anything within the real world actually is pretty much an analog concept. Anytime you're measuring something, it's analog. The only naturally occurring thing which we could actually refer to as digital is anytime you're just counting something. And this is why, for example, uh, base units of measure are usually based around the idea of counting things like the number of atoms in something or the number of times a vibration occurs within a certain amount of time, things like that. Uh, because they want to avoid that problem of, well, we measured it, but then the device that we used to measure something changed. So when we look at this within computers, the reason why we end up having the analog versus digital is, well, analog is what the real world is, but digital is what we can actually use. Um, because machines, for reasons I'll get into, uh, can't really store analog information. So, well, well, how do we start explaining this? Well, first I'm going to talk about a very simple example. We'll say, We'll say there's something like, um, over here, this graph over time is going to be, uh, it could be lots of different things. We'll say it's sound, some sort of like, you know, the, the loudness of some, some noise over time. So it's going to be some number of decibels over an amount of time. So that's fine. That looks like something that actually would exist in the real world. Um, but then we want to talk about, well, how do we put it into a computer? Well, it requires some changes. But what would it actually look like in a computer? Well, then it's not this smooth curve. Then it's more like this, where you're going to have, again, the amount of like, the decibels over time, except instead of being this nice curve, it's actually kind of a bunch of dots. And well, why is that? Well, there's, there's two things that we can't describe perfectly in a machine that the real world either is or looks a lot like, depending on kind of how far down you want to get. And there's two basic ideas. It's that there's continuous versus discrete, which is what we have here, where this is a smooth line over time. It's continuous. At any point, it has a value, um, which, of course, if you have a mathematics background, this is a continuous function, whereas this one is not. This is something where it only has values at certain points in time because we sample it at a certain frequency. So uh, every so often, we get a number. And so this function here is not continuous, it's discrete, which means that it only exists and has specific values at specific points in time. So this is one way in which the data is different. Now the other way is this, the values here can be all over the place. They're very, very smooth over time. Whereas over here, they're just dots at specific values. And this is because we have something called quantization. So data over here can be, anything between various, between kind of the, the range of inputs we have. Whereas over here, it's been quantized into specific values. So, well, why do these two things happen? Well, first of all, when you're collecting information within a machine, you're collecting it at some point in time. You're not measuring what happens over time. That doesn't, uh, that, that's a very, very different way of thinking about things and it's not actually how any mechanism really works. Um, so that's why you get things which are kind of uh, that are discrete within certain time interval. Um, the reason why things end up being quantized is you don't actually, there's no such thing as you being able to say what a number is unless you describe what, not, what are numbers. And so this is where we get into the next step. So we have two things here which actually remove information, which is there's the quantization and the discretization of data coming from an analog input to a digital storage. And this is one of the big problems that we run into because that removes data. Realistically, this input has what we could call an infinite amount of data. You can always look into smaller and smaller time intervals, and you can always look into smaller and smaller quanta, and you'll always find a value. This has a finite amount of information. So we've lost a lot of data here, but this is, this is the reality of the machine. So what do I mean then when I'm talking about quantization? And what does that why do we have that limitation? Why can't I just pick any number on that curve that was up there? Well, imagine if you're trying to say uh, you've got this some sort of 
ruler or something, and you make a mark in the middle of it, and you say, okay, well, what value is that? And you say, oh, well, it's between 5 and 6, we'll say it's 5.5. And then fine, you zoom in on that and you say, okay, now it's between 5.5 and 5.6, so we'll say it's 5.55. Okay, fine, zoom in again, look at that closer. It keeps, we, we, don't, we never reach a value. We always just reach some way of seeing it as being between two different things. There's always this low and there's always this high and there's something in the middle. Now, anyone who's studied uh, science at a, say, a high school level, they'll talk a lot about things like significant digits and precision versus accuracy. And that is what this is here. It's exactly the same thing. And that's why we have the same problem with analog and digital. Now, so now that we know what these basically are, well, why, why is it important? Why does it matter? What's the real difference in, in, in the nature of how we interact with these things? Well. The first thing to look at is a lot of a lot of times you'll hear the people talk people who are audiophiles, for example, people who really really like their audio equipment and are concerned about the fidelity of, of musical reproduction, things like that. And they'll say, "Oh, analog has a much uh, you know warmer or more complete sound." And they're kind of right because basically what they're saying is that between those two kind of discrete quantized values, they're saying they can hear something that's missing because they can hear that little subtlety between them. And some people can, if, depending on how you're sampling it, that, that's actually a reality. Now the problem is that these days it's very difficult for them to find actual analog data sources because as soon as you put any digital process anywhere along that, anything you're recording, processing, mixing down, or uh, producing out, as soon as you put a digital step in there, you've lost that information. You're not getting it back. Uh, that's not how information works. You don't get more. Uh, by looking at something. So this is making it difficult for them. The other thing that's making it difficult for them is that there's a real benefit you have when you start looking at things digitally because they have a right answer. So in this, in the analog wave we were talking about earlier, if you say shifted it down slightly, maybe it, maybe it degraded over time, it became noisy or quieter or something like that, well how would you tell? It's, that's not wrong. You have no right answer for what the numbers actually mean. So you'd run into a problem there. Whereas in digital, well, it's either a one or a zero. Well, what if it's 0 0.9? Well, then it's a one. It's, it's always one or zero. So that's why, for example, very old photographs or something that people would have from a long time ago, these days have degraded in, quali degraded in quality quite a bit. Whereas if you were to take a digital photo today, that JPEG will still be 100% fidelity in a thousand years, assuming you just store it and have the ability to actually read a JPEG at that point in time from the, from the actual device. So that's really where we, we run into this issue. So it really comes down to kind of at the end of all of this, the difference between precision and accuracy is analog data has infinite precision. You can always look at it more closely and find more and more information. You can always zoom in and it keeps being detailed, but you're losing accuracy. You don't know if that's actually the right value. You don't know if it's if the numbers are correct or if they've just kind of shifted over time. And so that's why we have that today. Also, because of the way computers work, they only have zero and one. There is no such thing as analog data inside a machine. Uh, they're always having to mix it down to something they actually understand. There is no analog storage inside a computer. So. And there's also no analog computation. So because of that, we always end up kind of putting everything into digital because it's how you store it, how you manipulate it, uh, but we do lose something on the way. So that's why you sometimes find these things being important to people when they have their, uh, their really high quality audio collection of purely analog recording systems. Um, and you see it in other situations too. So it's an interesting issue that's come up, which I think is worth people kind of being aware of what the actual differences between these things are. So anyway, I hope that uh, you found that informative and interesting. And uh, let me know, of course, if you have any uh, questions or anything you'd like me to talk about here again. I either leave a comment here or send me an email above. And of course, you can always trust me on Open Autonomy. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.